This episode of The Citadel Cafe is brought to you by listeners like you. Visit patreon.com slash the Citadel Cafe to find out how you can become a patron and help make this show possible. This is the Citadel Cafe, episode number 378 for Wednesday, October 14th, 2020. My name is Joel Duggan and the Citadel Cafe is where my friends and I hang out to talk about the geeky stuff that we are into. Joining me this week is Lou Page. You can find him at Busy Zombie Lord on all the social media that matters. And of course, he is one half of Zombies Ate My Podcast. Hello, sir. Howdy. I, I've been thinking about this now that we've got the month of Halloween. And for some people, they celebrate all month long. I do. Yeah. Uh, so how have things been picking up with Zombies Ate My Podcast? Do you guys have a host of new material to get through? Uh, we have a host of new material, but mostly because um, uh, Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, and Walking Dead World Beyond have all hit all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> World Beyond? This is news to me. I don't know about that one. Okay. All right. So they've decided to do a two-season spinoff series called The World Beyond. And it's basically teenage angst, the the Walking Dead. Oh, good. Yeah, it, it, and and every review you read for it, the review reads scathing. They're like, this. I don't know who this is marketed to. Do, do teenage will teenagers even identify with this? This is garbage. Eight out of ten. And you're like, what? <laughs> you just spent the last three pages ripping into this and talking about what a piece of crap it is and you're giving it an eight out of ten amc must be paying you <laughs> wow so was it was it called world's end or world beyond world beyond the... and it's t and it's tying into uh, i don't know if you know this because i know you haven't watched walking dead in a long time but they didn't kill rick's character off they just wrote him off into the sunset he gets kidnapped by people and that was like three seasons ago oh and so this is going to start tying into the group that kidnapped him okay because everybody thinks he's dead and so that's why he, anticipating a triumphant return they, they're bringing him back in three movies that's that's <sighs> the plan I kind of want, like, at what point does this run out? Like, I just, it's one of those uh, things. They've already like, announced that regular Walking Dead will end this upcoming season. Yeah, I knew that part. But, like, at what point do the spinoffs just lose their steam, right? Um, People have been trying to get Fear the Walking Dead to get written off. And I've really liked that show up until about this last season. Uh, This last season has its moments, but I thought the villain was really stupid. <laughs> uh, Like... The heroes are all really cool in Fear the Walking Dead. The villains are just always stupid. And mm -hmm. you're like, you're like, you're trying to come up with something that would be in a comic book, but it's not working. <laughs> so at what point do we exhaust the zombie apocalypse scenario? Like similar to I, I, viral I outbreak at, scenario. I think like at it, this point, I think at this point, AMC is beating a dead horse, but I, yeah. that's been my, that's been my gripe. I mean, I think there's always room for something post-apocalyptic or something with a zombie in it. You know, I've been watching zombie movies since I was like four. So, I mean, it's not like the genre is going to go away, but I think that it's mass market appeal is about to, I think it's hitting its peak. Yeah. For at least for a while. I, I, I feel like there's, they've not done enough for, uh, like alien invasion stuff. But I think, I guess the part of that is that it's just, it's two big budgets The the shows, yep. if, if they don't pick up and do very, very well, producers just can't afford to keep making them because they just, they flounder without any kind of cool alien special effects stuff. I mean, uh, what was the one with the lizard people that looked like humans? I don't remember the name of it. V. V, right. So like, if you can't do that and, and write it in so that they look like people to save yourself all the special effects budgets, then you're kind of screwed. Like you kind of have to do something over the top because of what we've seen from what, you know, audience expect from things like, you know, granted they're films, but like the Marvel films or, uh, or other things that just have heavy, well, Star Wars, you know, for example, 
uh, uh, the Mandalorian stuff like that. Like I feel like I would be on board for more sci-fi TV. There just seems to be so much post-apocalyptic stuff my my gripe with all tv in general the more i watch it now especially as shows are coming out to netflix that are like abc from abc or cbs or whatever is the mistake is often that they need to make 20 episodes or 26 episodes in a Mm -hmm. season and i think tv needs to just learn that 10 episodes is about what you need and and, and and if you can do a couple more than 10 and make it fit into the plot, great. But don't waste people's times with filler. Yeah, no, I agree. I, and I think that because people have such precious little time these days, that's where you start to lose the audience because you, you have to earn their trust and keep that trust that the hour that they're taking to watch your show is worth it. And they're not yeah. better just sitting there on their phone you know, engaging in social media. It, it's it's, it's usually a, a tell for me when I'm disengaging from a show. I, I'm usually pretty good at leaving my phone kind of like even upside down, you know, screen face down on the couch because I use it as a clock. So like if I need to check the time or the weather or something like that, I want it there or if, you know, parents call or something. But um, I listen to the television with headphones. So I very well, off, I will often miss text messages and stuff. Um, but if I'm not interested in what's happening on screen, then I've paused it or I've tuned out and I found myself, you know, doom scrolling on Instagram because it's just like, it's just, I'm bored, you know, like this isn't holding my attention or I've, you know, I'm rolling my eyes at some trope that they've done a hundred times before. And I just, you know, Uh, I I drive my wife crazy because I have severe ADD. Like I can't just do one thing. I have to be doing seven things all at once uh, to the point where it's absurd. So I will usually have, headphones on listening to a podcast and i'll be playing a game on my laptop while we're sitting in the living room watching a tv show and i'm watching a baby monitor now to take care to to see the baby (laughs) wow and and she'll just be like so do you know what's going on and everything that you're doing and i'm like yeah i'm on turn five in my game uh so and so in my podcast just was talking about this or the audio book i'm listening to is on chapter blah 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 and the baby hasn't cried in like 10 minutes and you just missed the plot point because you were reading your phone, hon. And she's like, how did you even? And I'm like, yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. It's just, just the way I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can, I can, I can monotask. Like I can do it, but I, I often find that it takes something really good in order to pull me in. Uh, yeah. I feel like the last time that I was so invested in a show where everything was just off, you know, like just, I didn't even have the phone with me on the couch would have been, uh, when game of Thrones was on and good, you know, like the first five seasons, I was just edge of your chair sort of stuff. Um, and I would definitely sit down and watch it then. I Um, I will say the, the one time I monotask now that I find is with the baby. Uh, uh, we've been trying to find programming for the baby. Not They say you're not supposed to let the baby watch TV, mm-hmm. but we've been trying to find stuff on YouTube that's just kind of like shapes and images so that she has something to look at right not, besides our two ugly mugs. Yeah, I mean, like the, the analog version of it from the 80s would have been like a, a Playmobil, you know, dangling above the crib, that, right. kind, of th- that kind of idea. And so I'll have her sitting in my lap and we'll be watching something on you. I, 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 I have a recommendation down in the uh, bottom here, but uh, which I'll get to. But we found a couple of YouTube channels that we that just do like weird shapes with music in the background. And I can sit there with her in my lap and she just is tickled pink mm. at the screen. And I'm like, this is what I needed. Mm-hmm. And like I don't, when I'm doing that. The phone is gone. The laptop is away. The baby has my full attention. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and because those are moments that you <clears> don't <throat> want to miss, right? <clears throat> exactly. I mean, like if you got your phone, it's probably to take a picture of the kid. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's cool. How old is Violet now? Uh, she is now just over three months. So I don't know a heck of a lot about you know the development stages, but I've I have often found that kids between three and six months are just super cute. Uh, yeah, uh, she gets cuter every day. <laughs> You're not biased at all. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I would like to say I am biased, but man, the amount of messages we get from like random people that see our photos online, oh, yeah. they're like, you have the, you have this adorable kid. And I'm like, wow, 
that's like somebody I haven't talked to in like 20 years and they're like sending me a message on Facebook to right. tell me how cute my kid is. I must be, and something must be right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I imagine that's a, ni- a nice thing to hear from people that you haven't talked to in a long time. Yeah. Well, we can jump into uh, what we've been watching, but before we do, uh, one thing that has been on my radar, which I don't have access to yet, but I do hope to get to this fall. Uh, I heard a recommendation for Raised by Wolves on HBO, speaking of sci-fi stuff. Uh, executive produced by Ridley Scott. First two episodes are directed by Ridley Scott. The plot is that uh, two androids have uh, ta- are tasked with raising human children on a new planet after Earth was destroyed by a great war and all of the social and crazy implications that go with that. And speaking of sci-fi, it looks really, really cool. Uh, Ridley Scott, of course, famous for aliens and uh, a bunch of other things. Um, so it's on my list, but I've got, I've got no opinions on it. I've not even seen a trailer. I just have... The recommendation of other podcasters that I generally agree with, um, so I'm I'm looking forward to check that out. I'm I'm gearing up to make a big decision. I I have to and want to resubscribe to Crave here in Canada, which will give me access to things from CBS and uh, HBO if I decide to go the extra uh, ten dollars. And uh, I'm doing that because of course Discovery Star Trek Discovery starts up this month, uh, and I want to check out Lower Decks as well. So, yeah, I I hear mixed things on lower decks. I yeah, I, people who people who like it really like it, and people that don't like it absolutely hate it. Yeah, that seems to be a divide within the Trek community. I have heard one kind of like medium sort of opinion where like, yeah, it's not necessarily my thing, but I get it. Like I understand where it sits, uh, and some people find it interesting from a tie-in perspective. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. You know, like they 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 have some some nods to other Trek, um, deep Trek trivia, that kind of thing. But, uh, so I do, I do want to check it out cause I hear it's funny and it's probably one of those cartoons that are aimed at adults that I will actually appreciate. Cause I don't like family guy. I don't like the Simpsons. Um, and, uh, or other shows like I I've tried to get into Bob's burgers, not my thing. So there's, there's a bunch of stuff like that, that I think I, I want to check out. And there's other things on crave as well, um, that I want to look into. Um, and, uh, one thing I did watch to, to get into what we are watching, which I have very little to say about other than I thought it was very well done. It's an older series. I was actually disappointed. I saw the advertisement for war, of the world's coming to CBC this fall. And then I realized it's from 2019 and it's actually going into season two and season one has just been licensed to CBC from the BBC. This is the, yeah. um, classic, uh, or it's a new telling of the classic War of the Worlds um, story of aliens invading the planet uh, from H.G. Wells, but it's told from modern day France. Uh, yeah. I will say, though, the production value on the first episode was very high. And the way they have it unfold, how astronomers uh, and astrophysicists detect sound in space first and they can't explain the frequency and it's it goes down to like government officials and like the way that it's handled it felt kind of like this is probably how officials would react in real world yeah. sort of like the science sounded i, I don't know but it sounded there's, pretty there's logical a reason, there's a reason why the original radio drama freaked people out and yeah <laughs> people were people thought that it was really an alien invasion yeah so th- it's a pretty good show and i enjoy some of the actors in it uh gabriel byron i think is how you pronounce his last name uh isn't it and he he's pretty good and it, there's some complicated character moments uh but it's it's all it's all kind of presented very matter of fact, which I like. Um, yeah. They have some good, you know, good modern kind of telling. I, I like that, you know, there's a, a mix of, of men and women in lead roles and uh, not all of them are likable, which is also good. So it's, yeah. it, it gets complicated. So uh, they the episodes, excuse me, air Wednesday on CBC. So if you have access to CBC, which uh, I actually have been watching it via an app it's called cbc gem in canada uh you still have to deal with ads much as you would watching cbc on network television but cbc is is just the the canadian broadcasting corporation so like if you you don't have to have cable if you've got a tv that you can have rabbit ears on you can get cbc in your region um so having it on an app you have to watch ads i want to say there was maybe four ad rolls throughout the one hour show um Mm -hmm. but Unfortunately, they were the f- same four ads, which is a little bit tiring. Um, they're short. 
I want to say they're between 15 and 30 seconds, but uh, having the same ones over and over again was a little bit much. Now I say that, and one of the advertisements was like a aimed at Nova Scotia because of where my IP address is. Uh, it was information about COVID-19 and safe practice and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, it's not all advertising. Some of it was like, you know, health announcements. And I don't mind those four times an hour because I think there's enough people that aren't listening that, that they still need to hear it. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, like I really enjoyed the experience. I'm looking forward to watching more of it. I'm just actually a little bit embarrassed that I didn't know about it, that it was out last year and I had no idea. Uh, you know, you know, I remember seeing a preview for it uh, somewhere on YouTube or something like two years ago and be like, oh, cool. That's something I'm going to check out when it shows up somewhere on a streaming service. And then I completely forgot it existed till you just mentioned it. Because I remember being like, oh, a new War of the Worlds? Cool. And, oh, yeah, it's not on anything I can stream. Okay, never mind. Yeah, no, and that's kind of like where I, where I land on it, too. Um, I'm looking at the first season has three episodes. So it's a mini series, which is maybe why we didn't get as much, uh, like, media about it as you would yeah. a full season. Um, yeah. But that said, that usually points to higher production value, especially when it's like a, a, a European BBC sort of, um, I actually don't know who the production company is, um, but like usually stuff that's a mini series. Think like, you know, Sherlock when, when BBC, you know, and, and right. They and only they, do three episodes a season. Yeah. So that kind of stuff looked, looks pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking out more. Uh, the rest of my time uh, was spent in the world of Super Spidem. And uh, I don't know if I've talked about these films on the Citadel Cafe before. If I have, it's it was probably, a long time ago. It's probably the more recent one, like Jason Bourne, because Jason Bourne, the fifth movie in the series of the Bourne film series, which is what I watched this week, um, that would have come out in 2016. And I would have been doing the Citadel Cafe at that point. But I think we talked about it when it came out. I think. Yeah, but Born Identity was from, was from 2002. And I didn't start the Citadel Cafe until 2011. So yeah. even Ultimatum, I think, was prior prior to that. Uh, Legacy came out in 2012. So I might have touched on that. I think uh, we talked about Legacy because that's the one with Jeremy Renner. Renner, it? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, boy, do these stand up. Uh, Netflix streaming issues aside, which I actually, I think I have to say is probably my set top box. It's probably my Apple TV because I can watch uh, Netflix and stuff on my iPad without any issue. So I think my old Apple TV is just starting to go. Um, the, um, the born films really hold up with the exception (laughs) of all the flip phones. Yeah. (laughs) And when they show in 2002, when they show the high tech uh cia headquarters <laughs> they're all on crt monitors mm-hmm. and it's the first thing you notice you're like what are they doing and then you realize yeah. when you look it up on imdb you're like oh this is from 18 years ago yeah okay i can for i can forgive that like that i had an i had a crt monitor 18 years ago that's exactly what i was running i forget what it was we were watching something and it was just kind of throwaway uh a, a couple weeks ago and when it came up we didn't, but neither one of us realized how old it was. And all of a sudden the character whips out a phone and it had like, like a snap out thing with like a text thing. And they're like texting somebody with like clicky keys. Mm-hmm. And we both went, Oh, I forgot how old this movie is. Or this TV <laughs> show is okay. Yeah. Look, and especially when you go far enough back where plot points would be solved if someone had a cell phone. Yeah. Like that, that sort of stuff I always find really interesting. Um, but this this was good. Like I I I really enjoy going back with it. They're good action films. They're great chase films. Even though the cell phone stuff is a little bit funky, the surveillance and tracking is still all there. Airports still have security cameras. Like they still have access to these these you know this bits of footage and stuff. So it it does track. Like it makes sense. Uh, you know, you still have to use passports and airline tickets to get places, you know, if you're not flying yeah. and you've got to drive or take a train or whatever. And I just, I really enjoyed it. I also enjoy the visceral nature in the way that, um, Jason Bourne is kind of like one part scalpel, one part hammer, you know, like I, yeah. he's this real cool mix of like 
you know, army blunt instrument versus, you know, James Bond super spy. And it, it really does well in that. Like he gets shot, he gets hurt. He either twists an ankle or breaks it. I forget, I forget which, I forget which one it is, but I liked the first one. And I think it was like the second one that I didn't like. Cause one of the characters that was helping him ends up being like the villain. And it just didn't make any sense to me. I was like, why is this guy the bad guy now? And then the hmm. third one was pretty good. Um, I only seen bits and pieces of the Renner one. I've never seen the whole thing. And I haven't seen Jason Bourne. I remember really liking Jason Bourne. Uh, they did a good job of wrapping things up. And uh, as he kind of like struggles to, to deal with who he is. Um, but I don't know which one you're talking about. Because I I feel like I I prefer the ultimatum which is the third one i think the problem with identity and supremacy is they basically happen in the same time period so they pick up even though there's two years difference when the release dates supremacy picks up right where identity left off like in the right. same they even some of the scenes even overlap like the opening part of supremacy is actually a, like a part of act three from i from my identity right yeah uh, and so there's some interesting stuff there uh I can't, I'm trying to remember her name right now. I've got IMDb open because I knew I was going to forget somebody. But I really like... This is Identity, so it would be the Supremacy. They brought in, not Julia Stiles, Joan Allen uh, plays yeah. Pamela, Pamela Landy. Um, and she's kind of like his advocate in the CIA. She knows something's up. She knows that there's corruption happening above her. And uh, I really like the way that they interact in that... You only know, you only remember it if you've seen the films, and you only notice it if you've seen the films. If it's your first time through, the stuff that she does to indicate to hit, like to him, like I know how smart you are. I'm gonna leave the building, which means you're gonna follow me, sort of stuff. Um, yeah, like that that kind of stuff. I I find really really interesting, and I I do enjoy the little notes at the end of the films where he's talking to somebody on a phone, and ultimately they're doing this kind of posturing and they're trying to get information. They're trying to track him and stuff like that. And just before they figure out where he is, he gives an indication of, you know, like um, in, well, in supremacy, she's tr he's trying to find Nikki, you know, it's like, Oh, there was a girl that used to run the, the, the operation out of Paris, uh, whatever blonde. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Nikki. And they give, they say the name and she's like, yeah, well, we'll see if we can find her. And then he says something along the lines of like, well, it shouldn't be too hard. You're standing right next to her. you know. And then everybody freaks yeah. out because yeah. he's, got, he's got line of sight on them in this building that they thought was secure. Um, and I, I just, I like that kind of a, that kind of like that smart ass spy kind of like one liner stuff. That's, that's. We could use some more of that. Yeah. It's not hokey. Like it's not like Arnold Schwarzenegger 80s films, like stick around or you know, let off some steam, Bennett. Like, it's nothing like that. It's just this really kind of like cool as a cucumber, sort of like, gotcha, but I'm still not, I'm not the bad guy, so you're not dead. You know, like that kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I really enjoy that. And I mean, the fights and the chases. He's, uh, he's got a spy TV show coming. Does he? It was just announced like this week. Oh, cool. Uh, it, the rumor is it's going to be kind of like True Lies, but he's teaching his daughter to be his replacement. Oh, okay. I was like, I can see that. All right, I'll take it. Arnold Schwarzenegger as a spy is teaching, or the, the mentor teaching the new recruit. I can see that. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah, you want to hear something weird? He's 50. Matt Damon is 50. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, uh, what? Uh, right? And that, that was the uh, other thing that, like, once you realize the tech in these, in the Bourne movies is old, you realize, wow, these are eight, like, the, 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 the the born identity is 18 years old. Yeah. Yeah. What What's the show called? Do you know? Is it? Um... I don't know. They haven't announced the title for it, but it was, oh. uh, it was, it was, it was showed up on one of my news feeds that he's greenlit. They've cast him and they've cast who's going to be his daughter in the show. And they haven't announced a title for the show, but it's basically, he's supposed to be like the spy mentor teaching his daughter to replace him. And I was like, yeah. all right, I'll take it. Yeah. If that's the if that's the premise, then I, 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 watching Arnold Schwarzenegger do anything, I'll watch him do just about anything at this point. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Matt Damon is a good actor. That's the other thing too is that there's this these films are filled with good actors. Even yes. even just the people that populate the CIA rooms are are yep. really good at delivering their lines. And something that I noticed um, from watching all of them, uh, with the exception of Jason Bourne, because it's not available for streaming in Canada without like renting it. 
um, there's something really, I want to say, quote unquote, appealing about watching the smarmy CIA assholes that are the bad guys in these films. Basically, the program directors, the people that are trying to cover up Treadstone and Blackbriar and all these kind of like secret operative yep. things. You've got Chris Cooper, who plays Conklin in the first one. Brian Cox, who's Ward Abbott in both the first and the second. And then the smarmiest of the smarm, David uh, Strathairn, uh, who plays Noah Vosen. In he always the plays the exact same kind of role. And that's always. the thing. Everything like, he's ever in. They're all typecast. Like, same with Brian Cox. Brian Cox was also the same CIA smart-ass asshole in um, Wolverine <clears throat> in X2. Yep. So, like, it, like you, you, they have these, like... I, 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 as, as much as I, you know, hate to point it out, like the old white guy at the CIA, <laughs> you know, um, kind of doing stuff. Uh, the one exception I can think of in the last few years where he's not a bad guy is, uh, James Earl Jones who played, uh, I can't remember the character's name from the Jack Ryan films with Harrison Ford, a uh, Greer, I yeah. think? Jim Greer. Um, yeah. Anyway, but again, like, plays that know-it-all kind of like has fingers and everything but he's the good guy he's not a he's not a a, a smarmy yeah. corrupt you know person whereas like um and they do the same thing again this is a spoiler if you haven't seen ultimatum so so don't listen to this if you haven't seen it because it's worth watching but there's another one of those cool scenes with uh, with born who is having this conversation with um Vosen over the phone about like all the stuff that they're into and you know, like all the files and all this kind of stuff that, that he's um, that he's dealing with. And he's asking Vosen like, Oh yeah. So like, wh where are you now? And Vosen lies and said he's in his office because he's out hunting board and they think they have him on a, on a meet with, uh, with uh, Landy. And then Bourne's like, hmm, well, that'd be, that's, you know, no, you're not. It's like, well, why would you say that? It's like, well, cause if you were, we'd be having this, conversation in person because the whole distraction of them to just leave the CIA headquarters just so he could walk into the guy's office and steal yep. documents right it was just such a smart like misdirection yeah and it's really a fun payoff because you really don't like this guy yeah and he doesn't meet the like the untimely end that a lot of villains do in action movies like I I prefer to see the corrupt you know, disenfranchised and, and charged with treason and like taken away to prison, which you just kind of assume, you know, yeah. versus um, being shot in the forehead or whatever. Cause it just, I, I like how a lot of what Jason Bourne does is to, he's violent when he needs to be, but when he, he doesn't want to kill anybody. Right. He just right. does it out of mostly like reflex action and, and um own safety yeah yeah self-defense because i mean otherwise they're trying to snub him out because he's like the last person in a program or or one of the the loose cannons in a program they have to they have to silence right um and then well then of course they kill his girlfriend in one of the one of the films and then that just kind of unle unleashes unholy hell um which i just i like i also like the angry jason Bourne. like i, I like it when he's like yeah. taking it to the top it's it's really solid um, it makes me want more super spy stuff, you know, bond man from uncle, uh, was, we're both, you know, the latest bond films are great. Um, speaking of, uh, James Bond, no time to die. The release date has been pushed again to April, 2021. Yep. And, uh, that led me to another article on CNET talking about a number of blockbusters that have been moved throughout the pandemic, including Wonder Woman 1984, which I actually remarked on this show that was set to be released in theaters in October. And I was like, that is irresponsible. And I hope they don't do it because I don't think anybody's going to go. And I really want the Wonder Woman films to do well. And it was originally supposed to release in June, then August then September, but I guess now October. Uh, and now it's December 25th for Wonder Woman 1984. I've got money that it gets pushed again. I've got money that it's going to be put directly to streaming. You think? I don't know if they want to do that. I, I feel like they want to keep it in theaters, which I think will be Warner Brothers slash uh, DC's mistake. I, I agree with you is that they should. I don't think they will. I, I mean, I think... I think they're going to lose money as it is. Uh, you make it an HBO... Right now here in America, HBO Max is not doing so hot. You make it an HBO Max special, 
and throw it on HBO Max, you're going to see a ton more subscribers to HBO Max. That's yeah. my thought. Yeah, they need to and, 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 and that will make up for the fact that you're not going to get the sales uh, of theaters. Yeah, and I, I, there's a lot of other movies that are deferring to 2021 as well. Ghostbusters Aftermath, originally July 2020, now March yeah. 5th, 2021. Soul, uh, which will skip theaters and go straight to Disney Plus on December 25th, 2020. So Soul, which is the new um, Disney animated film, uh, yeah. is going to be, and this is something that I noted, free for Disney Plus subscribers, unlike Mulan, which required a $30 early access fee. Uh, uh, I, I think the bad press for Mulan mm -hmm. wisened them up a little bit. Yep. I, I think you will get way more subscribers to Disney Plus who will then stick around as I have done. Outside of rewatching some of the Marvel films this summer, I've not watched anything else on Disney Plus. And yet I've kept the subscription because by the time I was done, I was like, well, there might be a couple things I might want to watch in September, but I know that the Mandalorian is coming back in October. It's not worth the 10 bucks to just unsub for September. I'll just keep going. Maybe I'll watch yeah. a Maybe I'll watch a nature documentary or something and I never got to it. So yeah. I think now that they've include, increased some of the catalog, there's some ABC shows on there. Like I noticed Once Upon a Time is there now. Not that I'm going to watch it, but I know that people are big fans of that show. So there's a lot more library content on Disney Plus now, and I think it will do very well. And I would be very curious to see the numbers on Soul, which is not a remake. It's an original film. It looks wonderful. And it's going to be day and date release in December 20. Well, sorry, it's skipping theaters. It's not day and date. It's, I, it's skipping theaters. I think, I think we're in for a new future. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, Theaters around the country here it, it are closing left and right. Or I, I I forget where I read it, but like I think it's Regal, which is like the third or fourth largest chain of movie theaters in America, has officially announced they're shutting down like all locations indefinitely. Companies going out of business. Yeah, yeah, and I I Big, think that they production companies. Do you think we're going to see more day and date releases? I think we will. I mean, I, I, I think that I think there's no way we can't. Um, I know that if it doesn't show up, on, if it's something I want to watch and it doesn't show up on Netflix, or it want, uh, it, or it doesn't show up on Amazon Prime, uh, I usually give anything that's an. I'm not running out to catch new releases in general. Uh, I, I, I go to the theater like once or twice a year now. That's pretty much my deal. And since we can't go to the theater, I don't like. The money I'd spend on the theater, eh, no big deal. But then something will come out, I'll give it a month or two, and it doesn't show up on any of my streaming services, doesn't show up on HBO, doesn't show up on Stars, and then I see it on sale for 15 bucks to buy, even if it's a crappy movie. 15 bucks. that's what I would have paid to go see it in the theater. I don't have a problem buying it on Vudu or Amazon or whatever for 10, 15 bucks. If That's what I was going to pay for tickets, you know? Yeah, and I, I find I'm buying a lot more movies in the last year than I used to. And I think that's the thing. Like when people realize that once they sub to Disney Plus, you can watch it for as like as often as you want. And when you're taking in your family's safety, you can stay at home. You know, you can uh, not have to pay way more than thirty dollars to to take you know a family of four or five to the theaters for a Disney film. You know. Uh, Plus, you know, when you consider like concessions and everything else. Um, and then you get to pause it and take a bathroom break whenever you want. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm also biased. I live in drive-in movie country. Right. I've got, I've got three drive-ins that have been open all summer. And they've been flourishing and, because they've been doing things like, you know, church gatherings and, and televised well, events and, and well, old movies. Like, wasn't the number one movie in the country like last week? Um Hocus Pocus or something? Yes. Uh, th that's this week coming. Uh, uh, it, they, they, the way Disney's doing it is Disney has never re-released Hocus Pocus ever. And drive-in theaters across the country. I read an article about this. Drive-in theaters across the country, they all get ready to close about Halloween time, depending on where they are. And one of the things they've always petitioned Disney for is let us have one of these movies like Hocus Pocus just before Halloween so we can use that as the one we you go out on. Right. Because you'd help us make a lot of money. And Disney's always said, no, it's in the vault. 
Mm-hmm. No, it's in the vault. Which is stupid. And this yeah. and this year with COVID, they've said, no, no, no. We're going to do Hocus Pocus. And the drive-in theater that's 20 minutes down the road from me announced they had they, – they're doing – um the way they're doing their ticketing is you pre-order your ticket before you get to the drive-in. And then you just show them your phone with your receipt and they give you your thing and send you – tell you which where to go. And – they said they got so many pre-orders for Hocus Pocus that they had something else showing in. They have two feet. They have two screens. They had something else running in the second screen. They had to shut down the second screen and just make both Hocus Pocus because uh, they had that many requests. Wow. And and both are all sold out for like the entire weekend. And Erica and I were like, we'd love to go, but with baby, not going to sit in the car with the baby for two hours. No, 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 that's too bad. But yeah, it, you, I wish that they would release the stuff like that on the home video as well, too, because like some people don't have access or can't go yeah. like that. It would just be nice to have that kind of stuff available. Um, I, I've actually noticed a, a number of films even pushing to 2022 uh, because yep. of they, they're things that I think really want audiences to be in the theater jurassic world dominion um i think the batman might even be 2022 now the the, the batman is 2022 uh they're having a bunch of production problems yeah well and because that's yeah there's i mean there's a lot of production problems across the board uh dune is now october 21st 2021 after just releasing a trailer a week or two ago yeah uh, eternals is 2021 november We've got, uh, yeah, the Batman, March twenty, uh, March fourth, twenty twenty two. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, March twenty fifth, twenty twenty two, and Avatar and Star Wars are now both December twenty two and onwards. Like, I, th- that's what's got me out to the theaters in the last five years: Star Wars and Marvel, and yep. roughly that's it. I, well, I mean, I saw Wonder Woman and stuff like that, but like. Wonder Woman would be the only one that I would go see. I don't know that you'd get my butt into a seat for like an Aquaman sequel or, you know, one of the other DC franchises. I'd wait and probably watch that at home um, because I don't trust them. I did enjoy the Wonder Woman and Patty Jenkins does a fantastic job. They um, just they just announced that uh, Patty Jenkins and uh, Gal Gadot are working together on a Cleopatra, Cleopatra. E- epic. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's only just announced. I don't even think they're... They're not filming. They're certainly probably in the just the pre-production process, but um, that would be fantastic. Like if you get it to the level level of like say, you know, Gladiator with um, Russell Crowe. Yeah. You know, like that kind of an epic film. Like my gosh, would that be good? So excited for that. Uh, but again, that's hopefully going to be at a point so far down the line that if you wanted to go see that kind of epic in theaters, that you could. Um, or at least give people the choice because you you never know. Anyway, that's that's basically what I've been doing. I've been going down this rabbit hole of like what's been moved, uh, what super spy stuff can I watch at home. Um, speaking of Jack Ryan, I actually finished season two on Prime Video of the uh, Jack Ryan series with uh, oh crap, what's his name? Um, J- uh, John Kransky. Yeah, Krasinski. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Krasinski. Uh, yeah. Great series. I only had two episodes to finish season two. I'm not sure why I fell off. I think it was actually a prime video performance. It wasn't anything to do with the show. I think he just kept on giving me the wrong subtitles or whatever. So, um, but really enjoy that. Highly recommend it. I talked about it before in the show, so I just kind of reiterate that point. But there are some things out there, uh, including a Treadstone show on on prime that's related to the jason Bourne films and like in terms of the same sort of theme so i might i might check that out but but that's it for me like i'm sure you've got some halloween related stuff that you've been watching. i actually What's have i have a big halloween thing speaking of hocus pocus uh last week uh i'm not a huge adam sandler fan fan uh, i like happy gilmore and i like billy madison they're just kind of off the wall goofy kind of fun and other than that i'm really not a fan of adam sandler but they announced earlier this year Hubie's Halloween. And the trailer looks so much like an Ernest movie. Like Ernest Goes to Camp or Ernest Scared Stupid. Oh, or God. Ernest. And I loved those movies as a kid. They were like my favorite things ever as a kid. I know, I know that a lot of them are really bad. Mm-hmm. But I always thought that Ernest himself was an honest, if not silly and fun character to have 
And the trailer screamed an earnest movie. And I was like, well, I'll give it a shot. And I will say it's about an about an hour and 45 minutes. And while I didn't laugh the whole thing, I was entertained for almost two hours. Um, there was a couple of gimmicks I thought were going to really annoy me. Uh, he's kind of like this innocent, stupid guy who loves Halloween. And his goal is he's the, he lives in the town of Salem, Massachusetts. And he makes himself the official safety guy of Salem, Massachusetts. And so he goes out on Halloween night and like make sure the kids are getting the candy that they need and not they're not getting people's houses aren't getting TP'd. Or if there's something wrong, he shows up at the sheriff's department and is like, hey, uh, I think there's something bad going on to the point where like it's a joke. They're, they're like, oh, it's Hubie again. Great. Like like that's that's kind of the 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 shtick. And he carries a thermos with him everywhere he goes with soup in it. And then all of a sudden the, the, the thermos is a telescope and then it's a, and then it's a vacuum cleaner. And then, and I was like, when it first happened, I was like, all right, I get it. Ha ha. This is stupid. And then they keep doing it. It becomes a grappling hook. It becomes this other thing. It does this other <laughs> thing. And it gets to the point where it's absolutely ridiculous that they're continuing to do this joke. And the more they do it, and you'd think it would get annoying, but instead it gets funnier. Because <laughs> wow. you're like, you're like, wow, they really did think about what they were going to make this thing become. And to the point where it, towards the end of the movie, it ends up being the thing that saves the day. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, what? His thermos saves the day? What? Uh, it, it it reminds me of the kind of stuff that I, on a serious note that you'd see in, in the Bourne films where like someone would be coming at him with a knife and he'd pick up like a rolled up magazine and kick the crap out of them with a book, you know? <laughs> like just... Yeah. 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 And, 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 and like it's, it, it's full of all kinds of Saturday Night Live cast members. Uh, and anybody that's been in an Adam Sandler movie pretty much has a cameo in this movie. And some of them, like you honestly, this, something spooky is going on in Salem. People are disappearing and Hubie's the only one that keeps trying to tell everybody, no, 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 they're taking people. They're taking people. And nobody takes him seriously. Everybody thinks it's just somebody's messing with him. And cause that's apparently what happens every year is people is like, even the high school kids are like throwing eggs at this 50 year old guy and being like, Hey, it's that guy we can make fun of all the time. And like, it's just, he's just kind of, honestly dumb kind of honestly like no i just want to help people no. and you're like you're like you know what i kind of like this does he do the like, voice the whole time yes <laughs> I've, I've never been an adam sandler fan I, like i said i liked billy madison and i liked happy gilmore and these this it, it's worth watching if nothing else for the first five minutes because uh uh i think it's it's Happy Gilmore. Yeah. His grandma has, is in a nursing home. And um, what's his name? Who's now super famous uh, and does his own stuff. Ben Stiller. Yeah. But Ben Stiller it, it, it was in the original Happy Gilmore as like a throwaway cameo character before Ben Stiller was a thing. And he's like this crappy uh, guard at the nursing home that really treats Happy Gilmore's grandmother like crap. And... He literally plays that same role in the first five minutes of uh, uh, of Hubie Halloween, except he's now in charge of a mental institution where someone has escaped. And you're like, wow, that kind of says something that they got. He got Ben Stiller to show up in this little Netflix movie. I kind of hope that a lot of the kind of the bigger film stars from the 90s don't do what Stallone and all those guys are doing with the the Untouchables or what are not the Untouchables. I don't think they will, but I think that this was more like they he they they're all friends with Adam Sandler, so they basically all agreed to do cameos in this. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. The other thing I'll say too is is as much as I I mean I I enjoyed this movie. Erica and I were both like, yeah, you know, this might be something to watch with the kids every year. That that that's kind of the, the what we. we 
the way we viewed it. Um, th- none of the humor was like eh, some of it is more directed at adults, but it's the kind of joke that would like go over a ki- a kid's head. Ah, uh, like Adam Sandler's character lives with his his mother. And it's an older lady who's been in a bunch of Adam Sandler movies. And the gimmick and joke is is that him and his mom are real poor, so they have to go to Salvation Army or Goodwill to get their clothing. And she just got a whole bunch of T-shirts. And every T-shirt is a dick joke. And she doesn't get it. So she's always wearing these shirts that, like, you'd see, like, at, like, like, like a football game. and where like some jerk would be wearing it and it points to like the wife and it's like like I'm her big man or something like that and she's wearing all of these shirts and so the running gag is she's always wearing a a a a, a joke that's directed at men and every time at, his character is so simple he looks at her and he always goes what does that mean ma and she's like I don't know but I like this shirt <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I I have a really hard time with comedies these days. It 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 yeah, it's, it's hard I, to get on board with them. I I still have it on my list. Uh, I believe it was you that recommended it. It was uh, Upload, I think, from Prime, or maybe no, no it was, that, it was that, Ryan. That was not, it was Ryan. That would say that's not me. No, it was uh, Ryan Murphy recommended it. So I haven't got to it yet, but it's definitely on my list. Um, so. so how much of this is like Halloween themed? Does it the whole get, movie? Does it get the whole it gets, movie? It gets scary and stuff, or is it just meant to be it, like it goofy? gets it it gets spooky in places. Uh, like at one point, the one of the kids agrees that him and his buddies are th- playing a prank, and they tell Hubie that there's a kid lost in the hedge maze that like the town sets up, and so he's wandering around in this hedge maze, uh, uh, like looking for a kid and one of the other kids who feels bad for him shows up and is like, no, Hubie, they're messing with you. Let's just get out of here. And then they find the kid that is pranking him because he was going to jump out and scare Hubie. And the kid's all tied up and they both look at each other like, what? Uh, What's going on? And then out of nowhere, someone with a rope drags him off like they're pulling him with a car. And you're like, wait, they just kidnapped this kid. And you kind of go, that was kind of creepy. Like, it, nothing is like truly, oh my God, it's horror. Nobody dies or anything like that. But it's just spooky enough that like a little kid could watch it. Yeah, I remember, was it Ernest Scared Stupid that had the troll in it? Yes. Okay. Which uh, my one of my favorite Halloween movies. I watch it I every I do remember year. We, watching that when I was a kid. It was one of those films that still had like really robust animatronic like costumes and stuff because the yep. tr- the troll the troll came, is pretty good he was yeah it was it had a like a huge head if i remember it was like most of the body was head if, yeah. I, if i remember it correctly but uh yeah it's been a long time since i've seen those the one that i remember watching and liking and i'm sure i would dislike it now is ernest saves christmas oh it's terrible it's yeah the, it's the worst of the bunch <laughs> yeah i figured it would be i figured it would be but uh, uh yeah ernest goes to camp is good and scared stupid's always been my favorite yeah uh but other than that they're all really pretty much garbage uh but this had enough in common for me with scared stupid that i was like you know that's kind of what this is uh I so think, i again, think i watched ernest goes to camp like some rainy saturday when it was on tv like a like an afternoon matinee on like NBC or something. I mean, they made a lot of those Ernest movies. Yeah, I mean, a lot. A lot. Uh, the one there's, there's one that I'm pretty sure has not held up. I don't think I've. I don't. I know it's one I've never seen, and it's called Ernest Goes to Africa. I can't imagine that that is politically correct today. No, I don't imagine that really gets a lot of a lot of airtime. That's funny. Um. I, I mean, I don't... When did they come out? The 80s, I guess? Um, Ernest himself it, uh, was created in, like, 1988 or 87. Yeah. Um, it was originally a commercial ad, uh, is the way... Um, uh, the Originally, the way the character was created. Um, the guy who created the character, him and the actor, thought that they would just do, like, a car commercial, and Ernest would be, like, the annoying guy that shows up to drive the 
the the the salesman crazy. And what they did was instead of having a salesman, they had the camera be the perspective of the salesman. And you never actually hear the salesman's voice. It would just be Ernest's voice. And then they created like this neighbor guy that Ernest would be annoying all the time. And so the guy would be like up on his roof and Ernest would be like climbing up the ladder being, what you doing? And you know, you should drink blah, 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 orange juice because they are the best. Da, 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 da. And he would do, and it was all a commercial shtick. And they're all actually really funny. And you can watch them all on YouTube. Nice. So Ernest Goes to Camp was 1987. Ernest Saves Christmas was 1988. Hey Vern, It's Ernest, the TV series was 1988. Ernest Goes to Splash Mountain, 89. Goes to Jail, 90. Mm -hmm. Scared Stupid was 91, surprisingly. Uh, then Ernest Rides Again was 1993. Ernest Goes to School, 1994. And the list goes on. I did not realize slash forgot that he is the voice of Slinky Dog in Toy Story. Yes. And most of his credits from then on are, uh, are cartoons with the exception of Ernest Goes to Africa, direct to video 1997, the, the year that I finished high school. And, and, it, and it's funny because uh, uh, Jim Varney died and the year he died, he had finally, he'd, oh, he had been like a theatrical actor before uh, be, becoming Ernest. And nobody would take him seriously because of the earnest role. Mm -hmm. And he ended up in a drama the year he died. And people said that if he had actually been alive to argue his point with the movie, he could have probably have gotten an Oscar nomination for his role in the movie. Wow. But he was already dead. But so they they, they kind of got thrown aside by the Academy. He actually played one of my favorite characters in Atlantis, the Disney movie as well. Uh, he yep. plays Cookie, the cook. Yep. Beans, bacon, whiskey, and lard. That's one of my favorite quotes from from a Disney film. So yeah, that's it's such a strange career <laughs> when when you look at when yeah. you look at his his stuff. Um, and he died in two thousand. He was only fifty. Yep. Wow. Yep. Cancer. Yeah. No, I figured something like that. Um, weird. What a. There's lots of strange things. I'm noticing a lot of like kind of like B movie direct to video movies hitting Netflix lately. Uh, mm -hmm. And as well as uh, Prime Video, noticing a lot of stuff where it's like, watch these classic movies. And it's like, these aren't classic. I was out of high school when these were made. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, version no, of classic I, and mine are very different. Uh, I actually run into that a lot. Uh, deal, I, I've had to work with some younger people in the last couple of years. And they're <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I, th I talk about some movie from the 80s. And they're like, oh, yeah, an old movie. And I'm like, the 80s is an old man. What are you talking about? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's one of those things where, uh, like, it, it's like that line from, uh, Captain America, uh, Civil War, where, where Peter Parker is like, Hey, have you seen this really old movie? The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. <laughs> and all the guys are like, how old is this kid? And it, yeah. 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 Really funny I, I, I'm running into that a lot lately and I'm always like, ah, I'm not even 40 yet, man. Come on. Yeah. I, tell I, me I'm old. I'm waiting for like my my niece to get older and for my sister to start to introduce her to some classic, you know, kind of like sleepover films and things like that, where even, even though they might be filmed in the eighties, they might be set in the fifties or something. And just like mm -hmm. the questions that this like tablet based child is just going to have about like, what, why is the phone attached to the wall? <laughs> I just, I just, you know, I'm, I'm, it's going to be funny to hear some of those It's questions. a running joke in my house, though, because we've been in our house three years. I have a, I have a phone outlet in, on, on a wall in my kitchen, and then every bedroom has one. And I'm always, and I said to Erica the other day, I'm like, I should just tear these out and then like patch the hole in the wall. Cause we're never going to need a landline ever. Like, I I have the same. Uh, there's a landline in the in the kitchen, and then uh, there's landline ports in all the bedrooms. And I kept the landline because it was only ten dollars a month until they switched the intercom in my building. The only two reasons I had it were to buzz people in, and in the case of a hurricane with power out, unless the telephone lines were down, you could still use the phone. 
Whereas if yeah. you if you've got a cell phone and it's not charged, then you can't you can't use it when the power's up. So yeah. um I mean I can if in in the reverse, if your cell phone is charged or I you know, I've got battery backups now, of course, um, for when the power does go out, you can it's more than likely you're gonna be able to use cell service if power and landlines are down. You can probably still use cell phone service. But but uh, right. un, but on but um you know, 10 years ago when I still had the landline, like it was actually a, a safe thing to still have it around. Um, but like, I, <laughs> I think I've, I've either covered up or I use it for other things. Uh, the, the hook on the wall for the phone. I think I hang like bags or something from it, you know, like, uh, yep. yeah, like it's such a, it's such a strange thing. Cause the building that I live in was built in the sixties. Like it's, it's an older, older, older uh, building. I, I put a, I put a coat rack over the thing. So coats cover the, the phone. Yeah, no, you makes, don't even see it. You don't even see it. it makes sense, yeah, because they're weird looking things that protrude from the wall. It's hard to deal with. Yeah, well, that brings us into the Internet Minute, which is is of course brought to you by you. The Citadel Cafe is one hundred percent listener supported. If you're getting value out of the show, please consider putting a little bit of value back in. Well, what does that mean? It means becoming a member at Patreon.com/slash The Citadel Cafe. Uh, becoming a member means you get access to the Discord where we chat about nerdy stuff all week long, as well as currently access to bonus episodes when they're recorded. Uh, normally that is at the barista level, but I've got it down to the base level for the course of the pandemic is just a way to kind of keep people listing and giving back to the people that are supporting patreon count is unfortunately down from uh, september we were at 22 we're now at 20 so that means uh, i'm usually looking for at least one more patron uh from the month before but that means we're looking for three new patrons for the month of october so if you're looking to uh i guess spend the dollar that's burning a hole in your pocket then check out patreon.com slash the citadel cafe it's a dollar a show it ends up being less than a latte a month to uh keep us live and and keep the mics hot here at the sizzle cafe i very much appreciate it especially to those that have increased their support uh over the course of the pandemic it really means a lot it helps us uh, get through a lot of the changes that have happened in 2020 uh, i don't have a pick this week but lou you do yeah uh if you're if you've got young children infant children check out hey bear sensory on youtube uh should be link in the show notes uh violet personally likes the ponies and the unicorns um, to the point where when we run that video and the music's playing, she's practically giggling and clapping when certain unicorns show up on the screen. Wow. So she's like recognizing specific ones. Yes. Uh, I... Like literally there's, there's a, there's a one with like a rainbow hair and rainbow tail. And when he shows up on screen, she literally Jill goes, we're like, oh, it must be the rainbow one on screen again. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I took a quick spin through this before the the show just to kind of see what it was, and it's actually really close to my um, analogy of a Playmobil or a yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what you call them, but like you know how you sit the you lay the infant down on on their back on the floor, and then there's like a little arch that has like dangly stuffies and like mirrors yep. and stuff like that for them to, to play with. And uh, I'm not sure what those are called, but this is just the digital version. Like the, there's no dialogue. There's no. Um, I, it, I decided to find these because one of the things we got her before she was born was people, we both bought and people got us these books and they're like primary colors and they're black and white shapes things with high contrast because it's supposed to help her identify things and mm -hmm. learn stuff. And I said to Eric, I said, I wonder if there's something on YouTube that's got this, but like they're moving. And I just typed like primary colors or sensory video. And this Hey Bear was like the first account that showed up. And there's a couple others that do that, but all these Hey Bear ones are the ones she likes. The other ones she kind of goes, Ugh. and I'm like, okay, so this uh, we're going to stick with these. It, it's cool and it's and you're funny that you mentioned high contrast it's almost like the pineapples are glowing yeah you know, like i watched some some dancing pineapples and uh they're just happy little shapes moving around it's it's uh i would imagine it, it's actually really helpful for a lot of parents i don't know enough about it i i mean ignorantly i would be concerned about screen time but then you know what's the difference between having a bunch of shiny objects hanging in front of them 
we we what we do is uh when in on Saturday mornings when we're like making breakfast or whatever, we'll put her in her high chair and face her to the TV, and then for the next thirty minutes while we're making breakfast, she kind of is. We don't have to pay attention. We so, can focus on breakfast. And this is right where I, you know, my brain immediately went to like tablet or something like in your lap. I think it's yep. a huge difference if it's on a television across the room. That that to me is like, all right, well, that's just that's really no different than having some stuffy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. It's it's neat. The, the, the stuff that's that's out there. I mean, I know that I mean, there must be some really cool technology cool uh, as well in like baby monitors and like, you know, attaching them to your phones and like all that. Kind oh, of stuff I, 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 uh, trust me. I, uh, Violet is at daycare right now and I get text messages. I, well, there's an app for the daycare and wow. and literally uh they message us like private message us in the app when they have questions or if she has a problem they send us photos via the app all day which you can then immediately download to your phone um every time they change a diaper she falls asleep or um they feed her or they have to change her clothes there's like nine things and whenever they happen my phone dings letting me know what's going on with the baby Wow, that's really cool. And I like I just not not being a parent, I just would not have thought of that. I I, I thought that the, 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 there was also talk they may add cameras at some point to the room so that you can actually t- tune in and see your kid. But that's kind of like overkill for me. I'm like, that, I, I know that they just did the diaper change. I, I don't need to watch them change the diaper. That's yeah. A okay. If that's the case, it's like I might as well just do it myself. <laughs> like, right. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Citadel Cafe. You can get more information about the show and links to some of the things that Lou and I talked about at thecitadelcafe.com. Music for the show was composed by Kevin McLeod, and you can email us at thecitadelcafe at gmail.com or find the show by name on Twitter. Subscribe for free on iTunes, Android, Stitcher, Spotify, and YouTube. Also, Amazon Music as of this week. Uh, Word of mouth is, of course, the easiest way to support the show. It's free. Just tell a friend about the Citadel Cafe and where they can listen to it. Leave a rating or a review on the Apple Podcast app or your podcast platform of choice. That helps us rank higher and be more visible. My name is Joel Duggan. You can find everything I'm doing online at joelduggan.com. That includes a link to the Spawn Chunks, which is the podcast I do all about Minecraft, as well as links to social media where I am just at Joel Duggan, including twitch.tv, where I have been streaming No Man's Sky and Minecraft. I have a new CPU that I'll be hopefully installing in the computer in the next week or two, and that should open up a few more things as well. So check that out at twitch.tv slash Joel Duggan. Lou, where can people find you online? Easiest place to find me is just look up the name Busy Zombie Lord. I'm on all the social media under that name. Uh, and you can also check out my show, Zombies Ain't My Podcast, where this week we're going to cover the season finale of Walking Dead because it's been six months coming. You've been listening to the Citadel Cafe, where we are fast, easy, and cheap, but you can only pick two. Two.